This episode is brought to you by Cole Haan, the footwear brand that celebrates extraordinary people who've transformed their passions into their careers. People like our boss, Alex Bloomberg, Gimlet's CEO and the host of Without Fail. It's the nerdiest thing, but when I'm like working on a story and then like just cutting that one piece of tape to make it work the way I want it to work, it still triggers this really satisfied part of my brain. And in those moments, I can't believe how lucky I am that this is like my job. To hear more of Gimlet's extraordinary hosts and conversation, go to extraordinariesonthemic.com. That's extraordinariesonthemic.com. Produced in partnership with Cole Hahn. A listener note. This show contains adult content and strong language. I was having a dream about Tabitha. Because this was my first night without Tabitha in a decade and a half. I forgot for a second where I... You okay in there? What time is it, Luis? Uh, it's 1.19. In the morning? <laughs> Not, Dolores. It's lunchtime. Fuck. Those smell good. Shredded chicken empanada, guayaba and cheese empanada, and chocolate mint empanada. Chocolate mint empanada. Hey, rules are made to be broken, Dolores. So he gives me that same red basket. These empanadas he makes are like crack. Seriously, he's a fucking artist. And he relights that blueberry blunt from last night, the Girl Scout cookies hybrid, right? So I take a couple of hits, and he takes more than a couple of hits. <sighs> the thing is... <sighs> I was just thinking about you the other day. Thinking about, like, you being out of prison, probably married by now, probably with a bunch of kids in, like, a nice house somewhere. But then, bam, here you are. Because I always, like, shit, back in the day, I sort of, like, I, I mean, you was always, like, uh... What? Nah, never mind. You want to take a walk over to the river with me? It's a gorgeous day. I gotta go back to bed, Luis. Back to bed? I thought you was gonna go conquer the world now. Did I say that? Did I say conquer the world? You gotta get outside, Dolores. You free now. I'll do respect, Luis. That's pretty fucking naive. Okay, well, I take your point there, but listen, it's a nice day. Go enjoy it. Cause you get to enjoy it from now on. But see, I'm scared to go out there now. That's where I fuck my life apart. I just, I'd rather stay underground in the basement, just getting stoned and eating empanadas with Luis and soaking in that shower for hours at a time. So the more he tells me I gotta go face the world, the more I just wanna curl up in that bed and die right there where his old man did. But after like a full week of this like total hibernation, he sends that chick down with my red basket of empanadas. Luis says he still can't get you to go outside, so I should try. She's got these long nails with these amazing points. They're painted, they look like marble, all silvery. They're fierce as fuck. Lucky nail over on Broadway, right by the subway? Oh my God, this is so good. You want? No, thank you. I just had a protein bar. Oh. You what? I don't smoke. Oh, shit. How old are you? I'm 17. 17? Mm hmm I guess it wasn't until I was 18 I started smoking weed. But that was old for New York City. Mm -hmm. I was a pretty straight-laced kid. You just gonna sit there watching me? 
My mom's up at Hudson. Hudson? Hudson Correctional Facility. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, since I was 11. Wow, that's rough. So, like, I just wanted to put it out there, because Luis told me what happened to you, and how you got nowhere to go if my mom got back and we were just gone. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Thanks, Chica. Nellie. Hey, Nellie. Thank you, Nellie. You don't have to worry about me. It's just a little culture shock, you know? <laughs> and maybe a little agoraphobia, you know? Mm -hmm. No way through it, but through it, right? Agoraphobia is no joke, though. My grandmother hasn't left the building in three years. Seriously? Uh-huh. She hasn't left this building? Yeah, we live on the third floor. Oh, you do? That's the only reason why Louise hired me. My grandmother's lived here like 20 years. I just moved in when my mom went to Hudson. What's your grandmother's name? Sophia Morris in 3F. Hmm. I probably used to know her. You wouldn't recognize her now. She's like 400 pounds. And it's a walk up, so like between the weight and the lungs and the heart and the diabetes, she can barely even walk to the bathroom by herself anymore. Are you making this up to make me go outside? No, no. I mean, yes, I'm telling you this to get you to go outside, but I'm not making it up. Damn. You know what? I should get the fuck out of here for a minute, right? You should. You want some company? So Nelly comes outside with me. Thank you, sir. Gracias, mamita. You know he lives underground, right? Who? Jeremiah, the guy who's always outside the shop. He comes up here during the day, but he sleeps underground with the mole people. Is that still a thing? Oh yeah, there's this big spike in homelessness. There's gotta be more people living underground than ever. Damn, and Jeremiah is really one of them? He's one of the ones who just goes to sleep underground at night. But some of those mole people, some of them never come back up. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can create a beautiful website for just about anything. An event, a portfolio, an online store, or a blog. The other day, a few producers here at Gimlet got together to read from their blogs. And some of their posts went all the way back to high school. I started a blog when I, I guess I was like a sophomore. It's called, you call this a blog title? Question mark. Oh yeah, very, um, yeah. Very self-aware. Honestly, I couldn't think of a title and I thought it was clever. Okay, so the first post is titled, So Yeah. Hi, I kind of felt like starting a blog, so here it is. Don't really know what to write about, but I spent a lot of time designing it, so I felt I should probably post something. That's it. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's the end of it? Yeah. Were there any tags? <laughs> Uh, no, just posted by Max Gibson at 10.57 p.m. Ooh, Ooh up late. late night. On, yeah. <laughs> With Squarespace, you don't need to spend time designing, which leaves more time for blogging. Squarespace offers templates that allow you to change the look and feel of your site with just a few clicks. Sign up for a free trial at squarespace.com slash Gimlet. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Gimlet to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It's the most wonderful time of the year once again. That time, of course, would be when we announce our annual Gimlet Winter Sale. Everything in the merch store is now 30% off until the end of December. So if you've been looking for the perfect gift for the podcast lover in your life, look no further. Go to GimletMedia.com slash store and use the promo code GIFTOFGIMLET at checkout. Again, that's GimletMedia.com slash store. Use the promo code GIFTOFGIMLET for 30% off. From all of us to all of you, happy holidays. Hi, I'm Wendy Zuckerman from Gimlet Media's Science Versus. Recently, we covered the rise of CBD. It's a cannabis extract that people say cures all sorts of things, from anxiety to PTSD and even acne. It's become so popular that some cafes will add it to your morning coffee. Are we going to be very chilled out at work today? You're about to have the best day of your life. It all starts right here. But unlike a lot of other fads we hear about, 
there is something special about CBD. As one desperate mum found out, it seems to have this amazing effect on some kids with epilepsy. I didn't believe it. I, I honestly didn't. I don't mean like I was astounded. What I mean is I, I didn't believe it was working. I know that sounds crazy and I'm, and I'm not this, you know, way out there hippie mom. So if CBD really does help some kids with epilepsy, what else can it do? Listen to Science Versus, that's Science VS, wherever you get your podcasts. So Nelly takes me to this, like, discount department store called El Mundo. It's like three floors, so I could buy myself some new shirts and some underwear and shit. Nelly wants an eyeliner. I buy it for her because I still got, like, $100 left. And she's making me feel sort of, she's making me wonder what me and Dominic's kids would have. And then she says she wants to take me for an iced coffee. Nelly? Oh, I'll get our drinks. She insists on treating me. Here's yours. <gasps> What's wrong? Shh. Dolores. Over there, on line for the bathroom. He's here. Fuck. I thought it was him. Who? Dominic. I thought it was Dominic. Dominic is your... I really thought it was him. Here. Sit. Thanks. Dominic was my... Uh, I lived with him for five years, just over there, around the corner, till I, till I went to prison. Mm. Spent the happiest five years of my life with that man. How'd you meet him? <laughs> Boy, how did I? Well, I had this friend at Hunter, this Australian chick named Georgie, because I did two years at Hunter College before my dad died. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was going to be an urban planner. What do you think about that? An urban planner, huh? Yes, indeed. <laughs> and look at me now. Anyway, so Georgie wants to buy some weed, right? But I'm not going to let her go alone. I mean, she's Australian, right? Uh, uh, sure. It was sketchy as fuck around here back in the day, back in the 90s. That block was always, like, lined with guys, like dealers, right? Up and down the block. This was a spot. And so Georgie says, we're looking for this guy with the purple hat. And he's standing on the stoop by himself. He's the only one not catcalling us. Mm. And he's got the smoothest cheeks I've ever seen in my life. Just the smoothest fucking skin. And the prettiest, most perfect teeth. And he, he's big. Like, he's thick, right? <laughs> and like Not like the rest of these guys on the block. They're all, like, real thin or fat as fuck, you know. But this guy with the purple hat. And he looks right at me. His shiny green eyes stops my fucking heart. And he's like, so you got my number now. <laughs> and he shakes my hand. And his fingers are like fucking sausages, oh you know, okay? <laughs> so, like, you know, I'm imagining, you know, I'm imagining things, uh -huh. right? So... I'm hanging out with Georgie a lot, right? Trying to get through all this weed so we could call him up again. And then I tell her if she gives me the money, I'll go pick it up for her. <laughs> uh -huh. You feel me, right? So I go back to the stoop by myself. And he's telling me how he lives upstairs in that building. And do I want to come up for a freeze then? Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. So I go upstairs with him, right? His place is nice mm -hmm. and spotless. Not like I thought it was going to be, because the block is such a shithole. <laughs> and I was always very shy, like, sexually. Like, mm -hmm. I never instigated anything myself, ever. But here I am with Dominic and something. I'm like a whole other person. Not to make it sound like it was just the sex, okay? Because I... And this is the part you have to understand. I love that man so fucking much. <laughs> and yeah... He was a mid-level career drug dealer, but I respected Dominic, okay? Because he didn't give a fuck what anybody wanted him to do. He didn't give a fuck if anybody judged him or didn't like him, whatever. He had his life, he made his money, and he enjoyed himself. And he really took care of me. My dad was drinking a lot by that time, like a lot, a lot. Mm. My dad could barely do his job. Uh -huh. He could take care of me. 
Dominic's the one who helped me study. Dominic rubbed my shoulders. Dominic mm. cooked for me. My dad never cooked for me. My dad. My dad was gone before he was gone, you know? Yeah, I do. So when he died, that's why I moved in with Dominic so quick, because I had to drop out of school. I had uh -huh. to vacate the place I grew up in downtown, and I was pretty much falling the fuck apart. Of course. And now I got to pay back my student loans on top of all that. So, of course, Dominic's like, work for me. Work from home. <laughs> pay off your debt. <laughs> Save some money. Stay out of the system. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I start dealing for Dominic, right? And I pay off my loans pretty quick with cashier's checks, of course, because mm. Dominic never had a bank account. But there's this loose tile behind our toilet. You gotta dig it out with your finger. Mm. Inside, there's a hole in the wall, and that's where the stacks are, the cash. Thousands and thousands of dollars. And nobody knows about this but me. And this is our future, you know? I mean, we got a plan, me and Dominic. We got a plan. It's so fucking intense being back here, man. It's so different now, but it's like, it's like it all just happened last week. I gotta get a job. Doing what? Fuck if I know. I just wanna be above board. Above board? You wanna be a barista? A what? A barista. There's a now hiring sign on that window. Oh, like, what, work here at Starbucks? Well, why not? It's just down the street from our building, and it's got to be better than working at Empanada Loca. At Starbucks, at least you get, like, benefits and tips. Barely anybody comes into Empanada Loca anymore, and the ones that do sure as hell don't tip. So I fill out an application to work at Starbucks. Why not? I'm friendly. I was in the service industry. I could get people their coffee. I could live with that for now. I get Jeremiah another five bucks. You're always generous, ma'am. Now it's ma'am. <laughs> My name's Dolores. Dolores. God bless you. And your name's Jeremiah, huh? Yes. Jeremiah. And when he smiles at me, he keeps his lips together. Like he doesn't want me to see how bad his teeth are, you know? But I'm starting to feel cautiously optimistic. Or at least a little less apocalyptic. But then that next morning, while I'm taking my shower... What? God damn it! Where's Luis? He went to meet his dealer in Midtown. Is the water shut off up oh, here too? Oh shit! Again? Again? I was just in the shower yeah, and it like... it's off. Damn, we just gotta wait it out. What are you talking about? Well, the building got sold just like a couple months ago. So what, they jacked up the rent? First he offered to buy out all our leases for like very little money. But a couple of people just took the buyouts and left. And he wants Luis out, so he's been pulling this kind of stuff with the water and like he's gonna sue him if he doesn't leave. Is that legal? Fuck legal. There's no customers here anyway. Please, it's just a matter of time and this place will be another bougie health food store. Just watch. Oh, fuck. Oh, sorry, Dee. Guess you thought you could just relax for a second. Listen, chica, I'll be just fine. application one? Um, just yesterday afternoon. Is that too soon to follow up? I sort of thought oh, I... Oh, um, well, I actually just got hired this morning, so... Oh. I think that position is filled now. Oh. Oh, right, because they hired you. I mean, I think so. They hired me on the spot. I assume it was that same position. Uh-huh. So can I ask you something? Are you like a coffee expert? Oh, or... no, God, no. You never worked at a Starbucks before? 
No. Okay. So, and you're 23? 22. 22, okay. I was close. <laughs> well, that's great, honey, okay? So, that's what I'm up against to work at Starbucks, huh? Uh... I'm a marine biologist. Oh, really? No. It's not even a white girl this time. Damn. I am so fucking worthless. And I am such an asshole. Hmm. Jeremiah's not here. Maybe he already went underground for the night. Water's back. Good. And so's Louise downstairs. Good. Thanks, mamita. There she is. Come here, come here, come here. I just got this one today. It's called Skittles. <laughs> Excuse me? Skittles. Like Skittles with a Z, yo. Because it's supposed to be fruity. It's from grape ape and grapefruit. The strain, grapefruit. It's indica dominant, which really isn't my thing usually, but it won a bunch of awards, so. I sold weed for five years, Luis, and I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. <sighs> so sweet. <laughs> So the um, water today, you want to tell me about that? The, the water? Oh, it's back on now. Here. I know about the new landlord, Luis. Oh, shit. That is sweet, isn't it? I know, right? Okay, but listen, the new landlord is, is not a secret, okay? I wasn't, like, keeping that from you, but you got enough you're going through. I, I didn't want you to worry. Do I need to worry? Hell no. Nah, it's New York City, baby. I got a lease. But you're being harassed by your landlord. Nah, he's just making a point. By turning off the water in the middle of the day, that's not making a point. That's that's sabotage. No, come on, it's not a... It, it, it is. It's sabotage of your establishment. What else has he done? Um, I don't know. He did call the health department on us, but that fucking kitchen's immaculate. They didn't find one goddamn violation. Uh-huh. Can't change the locks, though, because that'd be illegal. And all this started when? Just like a couple of months ago. But listen, this building has changed hands a bunch over the years. It's just never been worth more than we was paying. And even, I mean, sometimes the last landlord just let me slide because of my pops. Really? Well, honestly, they've been letting me slide for a while now. Like, I haven't really been paying rent for, like, maybe six months or, like, actually, it's been about a year since I paid rent. What? Yeah, yeah, about a year. Nah, maybe, like, about almost two years. You haven't paid rent in two years? Well, nobody seemed to care. We got behind when my dad was sick, and we've been here so long, you know, so they sort of just let us pay what we could. Nobody else wanted this place anyway, Dolores. But now, yo, this area is blowing up. And this new motherfucker who bought the building, he's based in fucking Crown Heights, Brooklyn. He don't know jack shit about this neighborhood. And the buyout he offered, I mean, that shit was offensive. I know what my lease is worth now, and so does he. For that buyout, I couldn't even rent a fucking U-Haul. But, yo, that's not even the point, all right? Even if he was going to give me a million dollars for this place, I ain't going nowhere. This place was an empanada shop when I was born. It's going to be an empanada shop when I die. Are you telling me you're squatting here? Fuck no, I ain't squatting. This is my family home. But you don't own the real estate. So? And you haven't been paying rent. But nobody's been charging me rent till like two months ago. It's New York City, man. I've been here long enough. I can stay here now, unless he goes through a whole legal process, and that could take like a year, and it's expensive, so he ain't gonna want to do that. Right, so you're squatting. Fine, okay, I'm fucking squatting, okay? I'm squatting in my own home. I'm freaking the fuck out about it. Why you think I've been smoking so much weed? I just thought that's how much weed you smoked. Oh, wow, okay. Wow, man. And you know what? Don't, you know, maybe you just don't need to... Well, maybe I should just give him a head start, Dolores. You know, just crank up that deep fryer, burn this whole motherfucker down, take the insurance money, start all over, you know? But see, that's destructive, right? And I take pride in trying to be a productive person, okay? Okay, but Luis, okay? Oh, no, no. But just, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Shh, <laughs> shh, I'm having a panic attack. Honey, take a breath. You gotta breathe. I mean, I, mean, I can't get... It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh, fuck. <sighs> Damn, Dolores, that feels good. 
Your shoulders are fucking tense, Lise. And your neck is all jacked up, too. Yeah, I got a bad neck. Oh. Yeah. That's a knock, huh? Sweet Jesus. How'd you get so good at that? Well, I used to give massages for commissary at Bedford Hills. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. My girl in there, Tabitha, she was a masseuse on the outside. But she couldn't do it no more, so she taught me. Oh, how come she couldn't do it? Because she got her hands cut off. <laughs> no, she didn't. She got her hands cut off, absolutely. Anyway, they used to call me Magic Hands, Dolores. For real? Yep. Did it over a decade. And there were some angry bitches in there, let me tell you. But not one of them could I not turn to mush with these hands. So what, you can't do it now? Well, I don't have the money to get a license or anything, but I put it at application at Starbucks. But they didn't hire me, so I'll keep looking well, you around. Could just get massages down here, yo. You make it cash only. You stay out of the system. Who gonna stop you, Dolores? You got a gift here, okay? You got magic hands. Oh. Cause a fucking massage. Shit, I don't think there's anywhere around here to get a massage. I bet people would come. Well, you're just a fucking entrepreneur, huh, Luis? Just a fucking stone entrepreneur. Hey, I get good ideas when I'm stoned. I had this blunt wrap that tasted like an onion. That's when I came up with the buffalo chicken empanada. <laughs> wow, why is that funny to you? <laughs> okay, but listen. I'm not joking. Oh, I know you're not, but I gotta be above board from now on. Above what board? What fucking board? The board, Luis. Nah. Nah, fuck that, man. Fuck that. Look, we've been shoved under the board, Dolores. Why are we still trying to climb above it? Yo, I was born in this place. I knew how to make an empanada before I could tie my fucking shoe. Does that mean I think I shouldn't have to pay rent? No, but does it mean I feel entitled to stay here under some kind of reasonable agreement with respect to the legacy of my fucking family? Yes, it sure as fuck does. We get to be entitled to, man. There is shit we are entitled to, too. Just based on, like, breathing. You are so stoned. Well, you know what? I would rather have my mind altered by a plant made by God that, that the FBI infiltrated into our community in order to lock us up than by the system that benefits from us being locked up. The, the fucking system that we are not only stuck in, but whose fucking taint I'm tired of trying to lick, okay? Man, you got your two hands. You, you a responsible adult human being who has served her time for some, some shit that really wasn't even your fault in the first place. And, and now you got to pay a bunch of money and jump through a bunch of hoops so you can get permission to make a living off of your own hands? Shit. And then get taxed on it? Nah, fuck that. We got to stop asking for permission, Dolores. Nobody's ever going to give us permission for jack shit, man. Or if they do, they're going to track our asses. They're going to ring us out for every last cent they could squeeze until the day we die. An old man with useless kidneys, gasping for breath, convulsing, rolling in our own shit. Literally our own shit in a twin bed in the basement under an empty empanada shop. You told me peacefully in his sleep. Dolores, we got to start taking our own fucking lives back. Are we going to start with those fucking magic hands of yours? But then he just sort of looks at me. He's staring at my legs. And then he makes this, like, slurping sound. And then he, like, sucks the drool back up in his mouth. And then he gets up. He puts his hands in his pockets. And he just walks out of the room. Next morning, he brings me outside. On the window, there's this, like, random sheet of paper with a big blue letter A. And right next to it, he taped up a little sign. Handwritten in red and black Sharpie. Massages by Magic Hands Dolores. Under Empanada Loca.
The Horror of Dolores Roach, created by Aaron Mark, with Daphne Rubin Vega, Bobby Cannavale, Keita Updike, John Douglas Thompson, and Giselle Jimenez. Written and directed by Aaron Mark. Executive produced by Mimi O'Donnell. Produced by Katie Pastor, Matthew Boll, and Daphne Rubin Vega. Associate produced by M.R. Daniel. Sound design by Haley Shaw. Foley recording by Nico Osborne. Mixed by Matthew Boll. Score by Allison Layton Brown. The Horror of Dolores Roach is a production of Gimlet Media. Thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace. To build your next website in minutes, go to squarespace.com slash Gimlet for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Gimlet to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.